Hey guys, we're back. I know it's been two months since Roost Tech. Um, we're back. We are rested. We have recuperated. I have rested my feet and we are back with another video. Yeah, so what we're going to do today is share with you the top 10 tips for newbies going to Roots Tech. Yep. So we're going to go through these and share some of the things that we learned as we went through Roots Tech for our first time this right. year. So we know it's a little early for the next Roots Tech conference. It's never too early to get ready for Roots Tech. However, we just need to do it before we forgot all the things that <laughs> yes <laughs> we, i wrote mine uh, down so i'll be right. looking down yeah whatever. so um in this video um just stay till the end we're gonna have a special announcement for you guys so um you want to go ahead and get started yeah let's get started with number one use the roots tech app for everything it has a lot of information in it a lot of class information um, exhibitors, uh, it has um, information about um, family search, and if you have your DNA uploaded to uh, family search, they also will help connect uh, family members to each other that are in attendance at Roots Tech. So you can use the Roots Tech app to see where your classes are, um, who's teaching a class, the schedule, what the class is about and you should use it. It's very helpful to keep track of everything that you're doing at Roots Tech. Yeah, I use the app a lot. Um, and that goes into number two. I have, have a backup session for every session that's offered. So I use the app to um, design my schedule every day. And then I was able to pick my first choice. And then I was able to pick a second alternative choice in case the class was canceled or um, logistically, I didn't want to go from one end of the expo hall to the other end or upstairs. I could, then I had another choice that I could make. So always have a backup plan when you're making your schedule out for the sessions that you want to attend. Number three, take cash with you. Now, I know, yeah, a, a, good one. Yeah, I know a lot a good of people one. are used to carrying cards. Not a lot of people carry cash like they used to. But take some cash with you. It's good to have your credit card and your debit card, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's good to have a little cash with you just to buy something to eat. And in the expo hall where the vendors are set up, some of them are selling materials. And while most of them do take credit cards, you never know if you run into an issue where um, a vendor you really want to buy something from, they don't take cards or maybe they can't connect to the internet. Like, for example, if you watched our um, past two videos, yeah. our recap videos, mm -hmm. you would know that while I was there for two or three of the four days we were there, mm -hmm. my computer would not connect to the uh, Wi-Fi in, in the conference hall. So if, you, if someone ran into that issue, they wouldn't be able to process your credit card. So it'd be good to have a little cash on hand mm -hmm. to spend. For. Number four is going to be go to the expo hall during the general session. The way that it was set up this year and from the reviews that I've been reading about, this is the first year that they've done this. They had the general sessions in the middle of the afternoon instead of first thing in the morning like they usually do. So the general session was at 1130 right before lunch break. So I was able to go down to the expo hall during the general session and there were less people down there. I was actually able to talk to some of the people in the booth, some bloggers and podcasters that I listened to because there wasn't a line or anything. So I could actually go straight up to the booth and talk to them. So that was a good idea. And they um, broadcast the general session at the exhibit hall. So if it was somebody that I really wanted to see, I could still see them while I was doing stuff in the exhibit hall. Number five go through the expo hall vendor list or exhibitor list ahead of time. I did that, yes. So in the uh, app, and I believe on the Roots Tech website, before you go mm -hmm. to yeah. the conference, they have a list of all the exhibitors that are going to be there in the expo hall. Mm -hmm. 
go through that list before you get there so you will know who you want to go see um, if there anybody if there's anybody there you want to go purchase from of course the larger companies are going to be there like ancestry and mm -hmm. um 23 me 23 me and um, all the Ancet, DNA companies. What else? I said Ancestry.com. Mm -hmm. My all, Heritage. All of the DNA all, companies. Yeah, all of those companies are there. But that's pretty much set. But there are so many smaller um, companies there. And um, there are some genealogical societies there too mm -hmm. that you can go meet with. Um, and they can help you with your your research. So go through the list of ahead, of ahead of time. I didn't do that. Um, and it was really intentional. Um, I didn't want to. I wanted to be surprised when I got there. Um, but I would implore you to um, view the exhibitor list ahead of time. Unless you just want to be surprised like me. <laughs> I did. It helped me a lot. Yeah. So. Okay, number six. Don't be afraid to talk to people while you're there. You have to remember this is a genealogy conference and for the most part, genealogy people are very outgoing. They're very approachable. They want to hear your story. Um, so don't be afraid when you're um, sitting in class before the session starts or while you're at the library. Um, talk to the people beside you. Hear their stories. See what they're researching. You never know. You may run into somebody who's researching the same thing or the same area that you're researching. So for me, it was getting out of my comfort zone and actually being less introverted and talking to people. But I got such a great response from people wanting to know about what I was researching, how I found some of the things that I was able to find. Um, and I got a lot of um, encouragement as well. Number seven, to piggyback a little bit off of Trisha, um, don't be afraid to talk to the genealogy famous people. Yeah. Um, they are all around Roots Tech um, throughout the four day conference. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see them in the hallway, you'll see them in the exhibitor hall. Uh, some of them there are selling books mm -hmm. or um, they're set up doing podcasts or they're set up doing um, uh, recording YouTube. Um, they are there and are more than happy to talk with you, take a picture with you, sign a book, whatever it is. Um, don't be afraid to go and talk to them. They normally, when you deal with celebrity type people, they tend to be yeah. kind of standoffish and not want you to bother them. But I didn't get that uh, sense at all. No. And so we met like Kenyatta Berry. She very was very nice. nice. Uh, she signed our book and she took a picture mm -hmm. um, with us um, and then Trisha met Lisa Louise Cook um, right and she was there she had a Super booth nice. um, I got interviewed. she got an interview for the podcast so yeah don't be afraid to go talk to those people mm -hmm. that you follow the ones that you um, listen to their podcast and watch their YouTube um, go up and talk to them and we are most certainly not genealogy famous no. but we'll be at Roots Tech next year and I'll have the camera <laughs> so if you see us there stop yeah, by and say hi. and say hi. We're nice people. We are pretty uh, nice. Number eight. Number eight. Schedule time for the Family History Library. I don't feel like I need to say that but I kind of do need to say that. Yeah, some people might not Because know. you're so engrossed in getting your schedule and your sessions together to make sure you don't miss anything and you want to hit the expo hall and get all the good deals and sales but you are literally a block from the biggest library that has the biggest genealogy and family history um, books there microfilm collections there don't go to Salt Lake City and not go to the Family History Library. The volunteers there are very nice. They um, are really knowledgeable. They know a lot about not only Utah, but they know everything about, well not everything, but they know a lot about all of the things that are in the library. So they have a whole floor just full of microfilm from all across the world. They have a whole floor that's just books just um, around the world. So no matter what you're researching, they probably, nine times out of 10, probably have a microfilm or a book on that subject or from that area. So, and if they don't, they know where to find it. So make sure you go and 
introduce yourself, let them know that that's your first time. They'll give you a quick tour and they'll be there to help you whenever you need it. Number nine, consider joining a genealogical society. There are societies there at the conference um, and based on what you're researching, there may be a society there that can help you with your research mm -hmm. needs. Right. For example, we are members of the African American Historical and Genealogical Society. They had a booth there and we do some volunteer work with them anyway. Right. But um, if we didn't already, they would be there to help us. And I was at the booth a lot um, over the four days and they talked to so many people yeah. um, that was wanting to know, you know, additional information on how to research um, African-American mm -hmm. history, but I saw a society there from Scotland, mm -hmm. there was a UK um, uh, genealogical so mm -hmm. society, there was a, yes, there was a Northeastern United States society, so. The DAR was there. Yeah, so the it's. Yeah. Local. It's definitely, you know, something that you should look into, and if, even if you don't join, go to those tables and ask them for help on how to research um, your history. Right, in that area. Consider joining a genealogical society or at least going to talk to them while you're at uh, Rootstead. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 10. Take a class on something that is new to you, something that you want to learn more about. Don't just take the classes that you know about. Don't just take the classes on methodology or funeral programs or whatever you know you're, you're, you already are strong at. Take a class on something new, whether it's um, yeah. DNA or uh, take an intermediate class on DNA if you've mm -hmm. already taken your test. Because um, they have classes for beginners, they have classes for intermediate, all the way up to professional. Um, and they don't card you at the door, so you can be in a professional class and not really be a professional. So go through the schedule and pick out at least one class that you don't know much about so you can learn something while you're there and take advantage of all that they offer at Roots Tech. So you thought you were just getting 10 tips, didn't you? But we got some bonus tips for you. Bonus! My bonus tip is a little bit um, piggybacking off Trisha's, the one she just gave, was go take a class specific to technology. Go to a class that takes advantage, helps you take advantage of the tech part of Roots Tech. Right. So, yes, there is all of, the, all of the genealogy, history, and research, and mm -hmm. those kinds of things, but the tech part of Roots Tech helps you learn how to tell your story, mm -hmm. whether that's writing a book, starting a blog, there's some YouTube stuff there. Um, I don't see any podcasting from uh, classes, but um, those kinds of things are there, and they have everything from beginner to advanced. So when I was, <laughs> I was in a class that turned out to be a beginner class. I probably should have been in. Right. It was. I, what was it? I think it was how to build a website. I think. A blog or, something. or something like that. But it was a very, very, very beginner class. And I'm more towards the intermediate and advanced level. And so that class wasn't for me, but the class was packed. Yeah. And I was, I ended up sitting in the middle, <laughs> so I couldn't get out. So I ended up staying the whole time. So I just worked on my computer as much as I could anyway, uh, editing right. um, videos because I don't need internet to edit videos. Anyway, consider taking that class and you don't have to start a blog and you don't have to do YouTube YouTube to to do this but take a class on maybe how to um, use the um, family tree maker software yeah. or how to just um, use social yeah. media for um, your research so just things like that or how to search better on ancestry or family search yes yeah. so I would encourage you to um, take a class uh, on the tech side of Roots Tech. Yes. What's I, your bonus tip? My bonus tip is 
the expo hall not only do, are there vendors out there that are actually selling things at a good discounted rate but a lot of the big name companies the dna companies the my heritage the 23andme um, wordpress all of those kind of um, companies were there and they had many sessions about their product or their website and so they actually had chairs lined up so you could actually go and sit down and then they had an expert from that area whether it was DNA or um, how to search the catalog at Family Search. I, I did that little mini session at the Expo Hall and they have um, a timeline of their classes listed at the Expo Hall on all the corners so as soon as you walk in you know what to expect or you can look at it and you can compare what you already have down for the sessions that you want to take and if you have you know some free time you can hang out at the expo hall and catch some of those mini sessions um, that the big name companies offer for their products or their websites cool so that's 10 plus 2, plus two. Um, tips for you guys uh, as you go to Roots Tech in um, 2020 um, for ten, you, ten years. is that right? Yes. Yeah, 10 years. It's the 10 year anniversary. So I'm sure they're going to have some um, big things going on at the um, conference. Right. So like I said, I know it's early for it, but just come back to this video when you're getting, starting to do yeah. your preparation um, for... Um, As a reminder. Yeah, just a reminder. So time for the special announcement um, that I talked about at the beginning of the video. Yes, we have some giveaways. Yes. If you follow Trisha's blog on journeythroughthegenerations.com, um, you'll know that we gave away an Ancestry yes. uh, DNA kit. Um, During probably, the holidays? Yeah, it was right, right before Christmas. Right. Um, we gave that away. So what we did was uh, at the Roots Tech Expo, we found a couple of things that we wanted to give away. So it's very important to say right now is that um, we paid for these. These were yes. not given to us as a sponsorship or anything like that. This is totally from us mm -hmm. to you um, as a way to say thanks for following us wherever you follow us at. Yes. And for those of you who are um, supporting us through our new YouTube channel. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so you want to just get right to it? Yes. Okay. So the first giveaway that we're going to do <clears throat> is Roots Magic 7 software. So if you're not familiar with Roots Magic software, um, it is software where you can go and build um, your family tree, all the information that you found in your research and all the information you found through your research you can put into this program. Uh, you can add uh, families, uh, you can add events, you can add notes, you can add any pictures, videos, audio, anything like that. You can um, add to this software and you can share um, all the work that you've done in uh, with people, you mm -hmm. can uh, burn it to a CD, you can get get it printed out, um, give it away as a gift, whatever mm -hmm. it is, um, you can use this software for. So we're excited to be able to give this away mm -hmm. um, and we hope you enjoy it. Um, we're really excited to be able to give away um, the Roots Magic uh, 7 software. Yes. And our second giveaway is Kenyatta Berry's new book, The Family Tree Tool Kit, A Comprehensive Guide to Uncovering Your Ancestry and Researching Genealogy. This book is phenomenal. I read it on the way back from Salt Lake City on the plane. Um, so you're not getting my signed copy, you're getting a, a, a different copy. So her signature <laughs> won't be in this one. Sorry. Um, but this book is phenomenal for beginners. And if you've been researching for a while, if you're intermediate, it doesn't matter. She covers everything in this book. Um, and it's just a really good resource. So if you're just starting out or you maybe researched in the past and you're just getting back into it or you research every day like I do, you will be able to find some good information in this book to be able to further your research. Right. So here's how you can um, sign up to win. 
So, what you need to do is comment in this video. All you have to do is tell us your name or tell us if you like the video or what other content you want to see from us. Whatever you want to put into the comments. Um, please, positive yes. words only. But anyway, <laughs> um, enter into the comments and when you leave a comment, we'll put all the names together and we'll have it a randomizer uh, draw two individual names only, mm -hmm. uh, only you can only win, win once, once. And, um, and then we'll contact you uh, via um, uh, instant email or some yeah, sort of way I'll figure it out um, so today is Monday the 15th, the 15th. Tax day. I hope you've gotten your taxes done mm -hmm. or a couple more hours. yeah or you've file for your extension anyway um today's the 15th mm -hmm. we're gonna leave the comments open until next monday which is the 22nd yes. right and so you have until the 22nd to uh comment um below and enter to win yes yeah so we appreciate you guys watching um i'm gonna leave down in the description um, links to these giveaways and um, also some other information about the giveaway mm -hmm. um, so read in the description if you have any questions or if you want to take a look online at these two items um, you can right. all right good luck thanks guys appreciate it bye bye